You know, I just want to take a minute and say congratulations to all Tesla stock investors that held through the tough times. Now things are turning around for the better. Fundamentals are getting better. Everything is getting flipping awesome. So give yourself a pat on the back if you guys were doubling down when the stock was below $200 per share because... Man, it was tough back then. It was tough. And if you guys have been watching my channel for some time, I've been saying and I've been talking about it on this channel that, hey, I think the stock was at like 150, 160, went down to 140. I was buying tens and thousand dollars worth of the shares. I had three or four batches. I've only got to batch number two. I couldn't get batch three or four done either. But nonetheless, I was banging on this table and saying you guys should buy at these low prices because they were low flipping prices. As someone who's going all into Tesla stock who does analysis on this company every single day, it was such a green light to go even more all in at that time. But anyways, now things have changed for the better. We are on the upside. Fundamentals are getting crazy. Wall Street is flipping. They're flipping. <laughs> and it's positive. It's absolutely positive. Shorts, on the other hand, f you shorts. And you guys deserve it. Shout out to Soy Merit here saying that Tesla short sellers lost $3.5 billion yesterday, erasing all of their gains for this year in a single flipping day. Dude, I love, I love it. I love vengeance. I love revenge. You know, I'm not a type of guy to go after revenge, but you know, when you short a stock that you probably shouldn't short uh, and hate on, like here's the thing, you can short the stock to make money, you know, as a volatile stock, sure, whatever. But if you like hate the company and hate the leader and hate everything it does, man, I love it when you lose all your money when you short it. I love it. But in today's video, I want to go over how Wall Street is flipping. Again, it's absolutely insane. They were flipping before this, but now they are officially flipping. The whole flipping wall street is now in shock and they're all increasing their price targets this is what they had to say after you guys smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already check this out it's insane again so Mary here shout out to him many wall street analysts have raised their tesla stock price targets today bank of america 265 from 255 goldman sachs 250 to 230 futon securities 330 from 282 tenacore 278 from 254 and so on and so on and so on and some of them have pretty interesting hike up some of them mm, not so much i mean wells fargo only five dollar increase good if i didn't butcher that name only three dollar increase to 156 bucks and then jp morgan who is also a bear on tesla but they're also increasing it by five bucks which is silly five dollars only it doesn't make any sense the company just blew out gross margins gave you guidance of 20 30 percent growth next year cyber cap production gave you fsd revenues gave you reassured that their four wheel vehicles are coming first half of 2025 and you're only gonna increase it by five dollars i mean the stock market doesn't think you're right. I mean, it went up 20%. A mega cap went up 20% in a single day. And in this week alone, Tesla stock went up $200 billion in market valuation or 26%. Which other mega cap can go up like this? It's incredible, but just the beginning. Now, hold up, guys. Listen to what they had to say because some of these analysts are surprised and shocked and some of them are being a little bit denial about it which is quite funny, but let's let's read into what they got to say. It's absolutely hilarious. JP Morgan, what he says is that we expect this surprising earnings beat to power a strong positive reaction in Tesla shares Thursday, given the degree of which investors have become conditioned to earnings misses from the company. And that's exactly what happened. This is coming from JP Morgan, but he doesn't he doesn't stop there. He says that the $739 million in revenue, which is pretty much profits as well, of the EV credits is potentially unsustainable driver. I mean, yeah, we all want to see this number reduced, but this is practically free money. And the reason why Tesla is collecting all these EV credits is because other OEMs can't get electric vehicles. And we have Europe next year toughening this up, toughening this EV. You have to get, you have to make EVs. And if you can't make EVs, you got to buy EV credits. <clears throat> Who else can you buy it from? from Tesla. And again, I in my forecast, I didn't think they're going to hit 739. I was thinking around the 600s, even though I think that's still 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 too high. And unfortunately, I think still uh, the competitors, <laughs> if there are any, but the competitors, they're going to have a hard time making EVs, so they have to get EV credits from Tesla. I know Stellantis was saying they don't want to do it anymore. Well, now we know what's happening there. The CEO is stepping down or being fired or whatever it is. <laughs> it's just funny what's going on. But they have no choice. 
they have no choice. They have to get EV credits from Tesla if they want to stay in business or stay in flow with the regulations and stuff like that. So I disagree. I don't think it's potentially unsustainable. I think if other EV makers or other legacy automakers make EVs, then yes, but they're not. So I guess in the short, medium term, it's not really unsustainable, in my point of view, at least. Now, one of the highlights that Wall Street took note is Elon saying that the vehicle growth next year is going to be 20 to 30 percent. Yeah, his best guess. Fact set was expecting a delivery growth of 15% for 2025. So pretty much almost a doubling of a promise that Elon is saying. And a lot of Wall Street analysts like Deutsche Bank analysts, they're also doubting this as well. And they're sticking to their 15%, which is good because we want them to continue not to raise their estimates because if, if Tesla doesn't deliver it, we're okay. But at the same time, we're looking at next year, we have affordable vehicles coming, interest rates going down. It's going to be one heck of a flipping year, man. It's going to be one heck of a flipping year. Morgan Stanley says Musk's 2025 vehicle delivery growth prediction is a maybe. There's estimated about a 14% as well. And Bernstein also wrote here that we continue to struggle to see Tesla overcoming the technological and regulatory hurdles needed to leapfrog current level four robo taxis and believe fully unsupervised FST could be years away. I mean, I don't know if you've seen this post yet or not, but look at all those states who are enabling level four autonomy. This thing's coming sooner than expected, guys. I mean, I, I would not be sleeping on it. I mean, Tesla said, Elon said that by 2026, volume production of the cyber cap. That should tell you something. So a lot of these analysts, the, the bearish ones are still bearish, even though they can't really can't admit to be that bearish anymore. But nonetheless, they're still sticking to their guns. They're still keeping their guard up. But for the most part, everyone is going crazy here with how crazy Q3 was for Tesla. And here we got Dan Ives to explain what's exactly happening in the Wall Street world. And it's, it's worth a listen. Let's go and break it down. Dan Ives, Wedbush Senior Equity Analyst covering tech. I know you're going to want to talk about pounds here eventually, but let's talk about <laughs> Tesla because those numbers are out now. Revenues are light, but hey, earnings. Uh, what matters more here? I mean, the whole story is about gross margins. I mean, that's really been the headwind on Tesla stock. I'd say 30 to 48 hours of a headwind to the stock. You saw gross margins. I mean, this is a blowout. Not even us thought that we could see a gross margin where essentially is anywhere from a two to 300 bit beat. This shows price cuts now under control. Margins start to tick back up. You start to get now toward 20% gross margins. I think this is the start of the stock ultimately. This will have a three in front of it as a stock as the gross margins start to trend up and as well as growth into next year from a delivery perspective. So I want you guys to take note. These are the fundamental stuff, right? Wall Street gross margins matter. Price cuts are under control. Margins are ticking back up. Wall Street sees gross margins to take back a wild deliveries increase. A Wall Street analyst, they love this. They love this. I'm going to say to the point that Elon food spoon fed them in this Q3 that, hey, we're going to go 20, 30%. Our margins are higher. They love this. They absolutely loved it. And that's one of the biggest reasons why the stock went up that much. A lot of analysts, a lot of banks, they started to buy more of Tesla stock. It's a sheesh moment. It's an absolute sheesh moment. And then he goes on to say this. So does the robo-taxi stuff matter? Look, I think longer term, I would think the, the longer term story here is autonomous, is robotics, is essentially the AI play. Street, what they needed to see here, show me margins. You cannot have margins going toward 13, 14 percent. Now that margins are starting to level off, that is so important, not just from a cash flow perspective, but showing the worst is in the rearview mirror. And when you think about all the bears and all the negatives, it comes down to deliveries will start to uptick. China, I think, is a source of strength in the quarter. But that gross margin, it's a Goldilocks for any bear. Mm. Okay, it's a Goldilocks for any bull. The bears, it's kind of a nightmare for because that was ultimately the core of the story. Dan Ives agreed that robotaxi is more of a long-term thing, and he brings it back to reality for the next 6 to 12 months, which is gross margins. And that's what Wall Street cares about, as he mentioned earlier. He also mentions that the worst is the rear view mirror, and I 100% agree with that. With the help of deliveries increasing, this will strengthen the gross margin as we go in. I mean, guys, in Q4, Elon said that they are going to have more deliveries in Q in, in 2024 compared to 2023. So that is about 515 or 500, about 520,000 vehicles being delivered in Q4 which is an absolute sheesh moment. And one of my favorite parts of what he said is that RIP bears when gross margins are in the plus. That's the main reason why this stock kept going lower and lower, which 100% agree. And obviously there's some other external factors, but the main thing was fundamentals. And for the past year, the gross margins kept going lower and lower and lower. And now that it's going back up again, these bears and shorts, I mean, they've been quiet lately. They've been very quiet lately and they know it too. They know it that it, their time is done. They can't really short. It's not a good idea to short it right now. 
maybe for the next few years or something. I don't know. I, but it's just no longer a good idea to short Tesla. Unless Kamala wins, then maybe. But and don't want to get political here. But that's a sheesh moment. But he doesn't stop there. He says that this is an inflection point, and I, I want you guys to listen to it. In what's been a year of softness for EV demand, and obviously more adoption of, of hybrid vehicles, for example, are we going to look at Q3 as an inflection point for that changing, especially when you look at results like this today? Mm -hmm. Or is this a Tesla-specific story as they do deploy more manufacturing techniques, more software, more more AI, both internally and externally. I think it's a combination. I mean, you had a, you, know, you look at GM's quarter. I mean, that was a Juan Soto like quarter for GM. And then you look at what we've seen in terms of Tesla. I believe this is the inflection point. This right now is the start to me of what we're actually starting to see from a gross margin perspective. The renaissance of growth come back. They've essentially been in between two growth waves. Next year, you have a sub 30. K vehicle, then the autonomous and AI vision plays out. And that's, in our opinion, that's how you get to trillion, trillion and a half mark cap. And right now, as we've seen, like, look, New York City cab drivers bearish on Tesla. Okay. And I think that's a good setup relative to what we see in the next three, four quarters. Man, it's music to my ears. It's absolutely music to my ears. He's saying that this is an inflection point. The growth is coming back. Two growth waves, as Tesla said it themselves last year affordable vehicles coming then the autonomous and ai will play out soon because we know unsupervised fsd is going to happen next year in two states and then that's pretty much robot taxi happening with current existing vehicles which is a sheesh moment and that's how according to dan ives that's how you can get one trillion market cap of one trillion to one and a half trillion market cap next year almost a doubling because right now the, the market cap is 850 billion so an 80 percent growth which is absurd which is insane still even with that it's still not the all-time highs, which is insane. So we still have a lot of room to go, but I'm surprised why Tesla is not a trillion dollars yet. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of a flipping time. But that's it, guys. That's that's RIP shorts, and that's how Wall Street is flipping. Not all of them. Some of them are still coping, and they're still having their guard up, but majority of them are increasing their price targets substantially. And all I gotta say is that 2025 is gonna be an awesome flipping wicked year now if you guys want to know how the fundamentals of tesla has changed i did i did go live for that you guys can check the video right here there is a time step time stamp because live streams that you know they go for a while but the time stamp will help you i think it's like less than 15 minutes you guys can see the full fundamentals of how tesla has pretty much flipped in their fundamentals it's absolutely insane subscribe guys get your about the dip t-shirt and i shall see you guys in the next video see ya